Hi, welcome back to the Unteachables as we begin reading chapter 25, Kiana Rabani. The first time the Unteachables go to Sonic is the day of the state science assessment. We don't know if we'll be able to celebrate how we did, but we can definitely celebrate the fact that it's over and we survived. Plus, Parker has his family's pickup so we can use the drive through Of course, he's not allowed to have passengers except his grandmother, so we have to walk and meet him there. But we can drink our slushes and sodas in the flatbed, lounging among the bushel baskets of potatoes and onions. It's pretty fun, so we go back a couple of days later when the weather's still nice. It's a long walk home, though, so it's pretty late in the afternoon when I come stumbling through the door, hyped up on sugar to find Step Monster in the front hall waiting for me. I'm instantly on my guard. I've been in Greenwich more than a month, and she's never once waited for me. She always, she's always too busy chasing after Chaucey, trying to keep him from spontaneously combusting or flushing himself down the toilet or whatever. What? I ask her. Your school called, she tells me grimly. Or maybe I should say a school called, since you don't really go there. My first instinct is to try to bluff through it. Of course it's my school. Where do you think I hang out every day? Save it, Kiana. It's all out in the open now that the science exam you've been working so hard on, they graded your test but couldn't find a student to match it to. They called us because we're the only Robinus in Greenwich. You're busted. The science test, I should have known, just because Mr. Kermit never checks checks his class list doesn't mean nobody else checks theirs. I kick off my sneakers and stomp into the living room. Wouldn't you know it, Chauncey, Chauncey is fast asleep in his playpen. The one time I need him awake and alert and ripping the curtains down, he, fa- he fails me. It's not my fault, I complain. You left me alone on the first day of school, so I found a class and stayed there. Believe it or not, Step Monster actually looks a little bit ashamed. I'm sorry, I should have been a little more on top of things, but your education isn't a game. And a school is more than a drop in the center, drop in center where you come and go as you please. Why in a million years would you think you could get away with this? Because nobody cares about me, I explode. If you did, you wouldn't have flaked off before making sure I got registered. And anyway, what difference does it make? My real school is in LA. Nobody's going to sweat what happened during the few weeks I was here. This isn't my home. It's just a place to part me until Mom gets done in Utah. For a split second, Step Monster looks as if she's about to cry, but she doesn't. I'll always appreciate her for that because I definitely would have cried too. Dad, and I know you live with your mom, she says at last, but this is your home too, and we're your family. I peer over at her. She really thinks that? News to me, I mean, she's always nice when she isn't too distracted by her kid, who admittedly is a full-time job, but family? So what happens now? I ask in a small voice. I do what I should have done on day one. She decides I'm going to the school to get you properly registered. No, I howl. They'll put me in a regular class. They won't let me stay in. S-C-S-A. Why not? Because, because, I blurt out the only thing I could think of. Because I'm not dumb enough. She's blown away. Dumb enough? I spill my guts. The Unteachables and Mr. Kermit and how we started out as a bad class were turning out an amazing one and pretty good friends besides. Step Monster listens to my sob story and the longer I go on, the more stunned she seems. By the time I get to the end of it, Chaucey is awake, but instead of fussing, he's watching me through the mesh of the playpen, listening intently, like he can't wait to hear how it all turns out. Step Monster looks me straight in the eye. It's that, it's that the class you want? 
that's the class you're going to be in, unteachable or not. I jump up and wrap my arms around her. I don't know if she expected it, but I definitely didn't. It's a weird moment, but not totally in a bad way. Chaucy isn't a big fan of that. He screams his head off. I pull back. You better go get him. In his mind, hugging privileges are his and his alone. She laughs. You're probably right. And by the way, I don't think you're very unteachable. That science test, the school says you aced it. Chapter 26, Mr. Kermit. I never thought it would be like this again. Every morning as I park the cocoa nerd, good as new, or at least good as 27-year-old, I can't wait to get into the classroom. There's a spring in my step. I'm practically jogging at the coffee pot in the faculty lounge. I fill the toilet bowl only halfway. I didn't need coffee to stay awake. I'm firing on all cylinders, as Jumping Jake Terranova might say. Even that name doesn't sour me the way it once did. I'll never be able to forgive the cheating scandal, but there's no denying the role Jake played in turning the class around. The class, just the thought of them, sends a jolt of electricity up my spine. Who would have guessed that the rejects of the whole district would turn out to be exactly what I needed? The unteachables, well, not anymore, are sure there are better students in the world. Okay, there are better students in this hallway, but comparing what they've become to what they started out as, it's clear that something very special is happening and their teacher has to believe in something I haven't believed in for a long time myself. It was the state science assessment that did it for me. There was a moment at, that, at the beginning, Parker in his usual pose, hunched low over his exam booklet, staring as if trying to see inside the individual molecules of paper, hose hypnost his hypnostics. He was mumbling, struggling to make sense of the letters on the page, hose hypnostics. Then all of those hours of reading supported kicked in. Photosynthesis, he exclaimed triumphantly. I had to hold myself back from cheering out loud. Jake actually took test off, test day off, so he could be with the class to provide moral support. In reality, he was more stressed out than the students and putting everybody on edge. Eventually, I had to coax him into the hall and tell him to go back to his dealership. He protested, but what if they, you, Bever, Berip of speech? He threw his arms around me. This was not something I ever wanted to happen. Go, I told him, wiggling free, wriggling free. Sell cars, jump through hoops. You're the best teacher ever, Jake declared emotionally. I'm so sorry I did. You know the thing. Goodbye, Jake. More memories of that morning. Looking out over my students and suddenly the whole room was blurry because my eyes were filled with tears, just like they dove into the river because they thought I was drowning. They dove into this and they did it for me. They had no way of knowing my job was on the line. That made it all the more impressive. I said this was important, and the kids took my word for it. They even studied A's. As I walked between the desks, peering over shoulders, the scratch of number two pencils filling the ovals made my heart swell to bursting. I knew it then, and the feeling has only gotten stronger since. I love these students, Parker, Aldo, Elaine, Barnstorm, Ram, and Mateo, and Kiana, who, it turns out, isn't even really in the class or any class. That's my fault. I'm the only one who never bothered to glance at my own attendance list long enough to realize that my top student wasn't on it. 
how blind I was, how burned out and detached. On the other hand, who expects a kid to come to school she isn't signed up for? Her stepmother straightened everything out. Christina Vargas explains at our meeting the week after the test, Kiana's only here for a couple of months and the registration process was too much red tape. So she blundered into your class and figured she'd be gone by the time anybody figured out she didn't belong. It's ridiculous, but almost understandable. My cheeks got hot. I suppose that doesn't make me look very on top of things. We're all at fault, the principal says kindly. I had her progress report right in my hand. I remember struggling to put a face to the name, but I never took it any further. Well, I'm not sorry it happened, I go on. She's a fantastic kid and a brilliant student. Look at her score on the exam, 96. She set a positive example for the rest of the class. My voice trails off. Christina's face has turned ashen. I take a guess at the reason. Are you moving her? Because her science score proves she doesn't belong with my kids. I'm not moving her, she replies grimly. Her stepmother specifically asks that Kiana stay with you. Demand it, actually, but there's something else. I sit back, waiting. Christina takes a deep breath. This is difficult, Zachary. I hate to be the person who has to give you the news. The truth is, you won't be a teacher here much longer. It comes so far out of left field that I'm shocked into silent silence at first, then light dawns. That is the science test, but the scores were good. Kiana's alone. That's just it. She tells me, you know, Dr. Thaddeus, once you gone, as soon as he realizes what was happening with the Roboti girl, he has her result disallowed. Even without her, I insist, the others have made such so much progress. Surely their grades are enough. Almost, she said sadly. Remember, Dr. Thaddeus has access to every test these kids have ever taken since preschool. He can cherry pick exactly the numbers he needs to make sure you can't win. It reminds me of an old saying I heard somewhere. Figures don't lie, but liars figure. Devastated, the principal removes an envelope from her desk drawer and hands it over. Dr. Thaddeus dropped it off this morning. I pleaded with him, Zachary. I pointed out how close they came to making it, even though he stacked the odds against them. I raved about how absolute zero was expected of these kids. So any proficiency at all is a credit to a remarkable teacher. He couldn't have cared less. He said even if they had fallen short of one millionth of one percent, it would have have changed. It wouldn't have changed anything. She's still talking, weeping practically, but I can't make it out, in, out any of it. It's like I'm in a tunnel and the echoes are rattling around, but not quite reaching me. Fingers numb. I fumble the letter out of the envelope. Notice of termination. Attention, Kermit, comma, Zachary. Please be advised that they're persistent to Article 12, Subsection 9 of the Greenwich Teachers Association contract. Your service will no longer be required as of December 22nd of the current school year. My eyes skip down the page, bouncing off terms like poor performance, unacceptable results, and ineffective educator. I can't bring myself to read it all, but the message is painfully clear. This magical semester in which I turned my own life around as much as the students was nothing but a tease. It raised my hopes only to dash them to pieces at my feet. It restored my faith in teaching and in myself purely so the taste would be all the more bitter now. I'm fired, sacked, kicked to the curb, canned, 
given the boot as of December 22nd. Merry Christmas. Worst of all, my career is going to end six months too soon to qualify. <coughs> Excuse me for early retirement. Fade, uh, fade to black. I barely hear Christina's tearful words of sympathy as I wander out of her office. Instead of heading to room 117, I stagger through the main doors and find the parking lot. I can't face the kids, not now, when I'm still so stunned. What would I say to them? How could I explain it? I don't blame them for the superintendent's malice, but how could I ever convince them that this isn't their fault? I have to find those words eventually, but not today. The outside world sounds different than it usually does, subdued, muffled. Somehow my feet carry me to the cocoa nerd and I climb behind the wheel. The locks haven't worked in more than a decade. The car starts in its customary cloud of burned oil. Oil. Outside, it begins to rain, and I activate the lone functioning wiper. Too bad it isn't the one on the driver's side. I squint through the water-spattered windshield. At least it's forcing me to watch the road. Otherwise, I'd probably wrap the cocoa nerd around a telephone pole. At the entrance to the parking lot, I signal left and press the gas. There's a loud pop followed by a clatter, and everything goes quiet. I try the key a few more times, nothing, not even a feeble attempt to catch. The turn signal clicks once more, and then it dies too. I get out of the car and open the hood. To my amazement, nothing's there. On closer inspection, I spy the motor lying on the pavement next to the battery, the radiator, the transmission, and a lot of other stuff that used to be attached to the car. Over a quarter century with the Coco nerd, and I thought I'd seen it all. Wrong again. This is an ex Coco nerd. It's raining harder than I'm, and I'm getting soaked. There's probably something I should be doing, but what? Call a tow truck? Why? The heap of scrap metal isn't really a car anymore. Inform the school that their driveway is blocked? They'd figure it out sooner or later. I flip up the collar of my jacket and start walking toward home. Tune in next time.